Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey there, Post Institute. This is Christy Fall, the co-founder, coming at you live. I'm coming on a little early tonight for the this night's episode of the Post Daily Dose, the best little parenting show on the internet. Um, I just have some things that I need to get done, and uh, the Daily Dose always sort of ends my work day, and I need, Beatrice is telling me, I need to get going. I got things to do. So um, I hope you guys don't mind me coming on a little bit early, and uh, if you miss being on live with me because of that, um, I sure apologize, but hopefully you can listen, learn, and watch at a later time. So anyway, of course I want to plug these books, Brian's book, From Fear to Love, that you can get on promotion at feartolovebook.com. Somebody's showing up and they're sending me those hearts, and it makes me feel so good. Is that you, Heather? Oh, my love, my love. Uh, I think about you all the time. I think about your family. Um, I hope that some code cracking is happening for you all. Um, Reach out to me sometime through email. Maybe we can chat up a little bit and come up with some things that might be helpful or at least talk about it, you know, just to be able to talk sometimes can make all the difference. Um, Also, this workbook that goes right along with that book, um, you can get this in print on Amazon, and then also we have it in ebook form on our website. Uh, she says, yep, I need you. Still struggling. I understand completely. This is, um, well, you know, this isn't easy stuff. <laughs> Sometimes more complex than other times. You know, every child's different, and um, there's so much, there's so much to give consideration to. You know, we have, we have our genetics. We have our womb experience. We have all that stuff that we've been talking about this week in terms of how trauma affects the brain and the chemicals, the um, the hormones of oxytocin, uh, insulin, and cortisol, and how it affects our neurotransmitters, um, our dopamine, our serotonin, and that other one that has to do with like adrenaline. And that's a really big deal. It's a really big deal. We're going to talk about that a little bit more tonight. Um, and then also this book right here, Brian's book, The Great Behavior Breakdown, it just takes it all a little bit deeper. Um, you can actually get these two books as a dandy little package on our website, and they're discounted when you buy them together. You save about 5 bucks. So um, there you go, fresh little tip of the day. So uh, let's see. The first thing I want to talk about is um, you know, we've been talking all about how trauma affects the brain. Um, so one of the things that we know is oxytocin is affected, that the, the pathways for oxytocin are not activated, that um, we are born, we are all born with an active amygdala, and that oxytocin, which is referred to as the love hormone, which helps us to calm our brain down, it helps to modulate the cortisol, the stress hormone, and that by being in safe, loving, connected relationships over time helps create more oxytocin being available in the brain, and that is a major game changer. Um, I will even, so like my son who's now 27, Um, And he's doing really well, but he had to go through a whole lot of stuff. But there was a time frame where um, literally he was 15, but we, in the parent-child interaction, you might see more like two, three, four. Like there were lots of back rubs and lots of cuddles and lots of hugs, Um, so much affection. And it was whenever, like whenever he was open to it, somebody was always available to give him a back rub or give him a hug. Um, And so it was amazing, like when he first came, 
to our group home, he literally sat like in a corner on the laptop just watching everybody, just watching everything as it went down. Then he went through a phase where he was just in with everybody else. Then he went through a phase where he really wanted that nurturing, and he sought it. And, we, you know, it was just all on his terms, and we gave it, and we gave it, and we gave it, and we gave it. I would guess that if I asked him about that now, he would not even remember it. It, would, it was during a time, during that whole time, his brain was so hijacked that if you talk to him about that very much now, he remembers the people and he remembers a few things that we did and he remembers places we went. But as far as like day-to-day -day activity, he doesn't have really any memory of that. And one thing I want to say about all of that is we all have, we all have this struggle, the struggle of not knowing what it feels like to be somebody else. We think that everybody feels the same way we do. And I'm not talking about necessarily our emotions, although I think we do that too. Um, but I mean more like, um, like right now, I've kind of got this, this little ache in my shoulder and I feel a little neurologically fatigued. I feel a little edgy because I've been at my computer all day. Nobody knows what that feels like in my body except me. Nobody knows what it feels like in somebody else's body. And we make a lot of assumptions that they feel the same way we feel. And yet, when I think about all the things we were talking about over this past week about how trauma affects the brain, and then somebody asked about, you know, what happens when they're not able to accept the love that we're sharing. We talked about that a little bit, but it led me to think when the chemicals in our brain are affected by trauma, if you feel, if you're depleted in your dopamine, if you're depleted in your serotonin, if you don't have much oxytocin available, but your fight, flight, and freeze is full on in charge and you have plenty of stress hormones, that condition of the brain makes it very difficult to receive that affection. When we are stressed, the first thing we do is constrict. And so when you're wondering about how do I connect with my child, really it takes a lot of thoughtfulness, awareness, having your finger on the pulse to try to develop a level of empathy and understanding for what it feels like to be them. So it may not be that they are, quote unquote, rejecting your affection. It may be that they can't tolerate it, that it creates an edginess for them, that it's, it could even be like, you know, I've not been touched and hugged by anybody in a way that felt safe. And when you come at me with that, it kind of freaks me out a little bit. So that's when I'm like, everybody bring it down a little bit. Everybody bring it down. Work on getting our fingers on the pulse of our children and who they really are, what's going on for them at the brain level. Um, and go slow, you know. Follow their pace. Sense what their pace is and follow their lead in that. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about some things that might be helpful. Might be helpful for you. Might be helpful for your kids having to do with supplements because um, a lot of these things that we talked about can be influenced by nutrition and by supplements. And before we had all the psychopharmological stuff that we have now, things like depression and anxiety were actually treated through amino acids and supplements. And so it is solid, it's solid information and we are so quick to jump to a medical model and use a psychopharmological medication. I'm going to tell you something kind of funny real quick. Um, so Brian, Brian Post, you know, he's, he's out there, right? <laughs> Which is how we got here because his, the way he thinks and the way he sees things is so incredible. Being, you know, being able to be inside of his brain is like, Whoa! you know, it's always going, he's always thinking, he's always got all this 
going on, but he has this just incredible insight into like the condition of being human. It's amazing. But one of the things that I remember was him talking about somebody being prescribed something, and it wasn't at the group home, and I don't even remember, but it was maybe a family he was working with, and the mom was asking all these questions, and he was like, well, here, I'll take it. I'll try it, and I'll tell you what it feels like, you know, at least from my perspective. The thing is, is these, these medications, you know, they're powerful. The medications that doctors prescribe can be very, very powerful, and we're just looking for like this, like something just to fix this, right? And it's not necessarily something that's just going to be fixed by a medicine. Like most of the people that come into contact with the Post Institute, their children have three, four, five different diagnoses, none of which are actually PTSD, which is the root issue. And they're on just as many medications, and they're not working. And they have lots of side effects. And I'm not saying that's true for everyone, but I see that so often that I ask myself, one, why aren't we involving endocrinology so that we can at least keep an eye on labs and how, this, how these medications might be affecting other aspects of our children's lives? Um, and then I also think, why aren't we starting with things that are more like supplements and things that are more homeopathic as opposed to jumping straight into um, prescription medications? So I'm going to tell you about a few supplements that have proven to be helpful for anxiety and sleep. I'm going to start there. So anxiety and sleep, two supplements that are over the counter. Um, I've tried them both. My daughter uses them both. I know several different families who use them and have good reports. One is magnesium glyconate. Magnesium glyconate. The other is l Theanine. <laughs> I'm one of those, like I read it, it starts with a T, I know how it's spelled, but how to pronounce it, I'm not the best. So it's the letter L-T-H-E-A-N-I-N-E. Both of those have been proven to be helpful for sleep and also for anxiety. Um, also, melatonin. Many people have really good results with melatonin. Um, for depression, D3 fish oil, L-methylfolate, which is not, it's a different form of folic acid because some people are not able, their bodies are not able to put the folic acid to use that's in, that's supplemented in our foods, like cereals and breads are all supplemented with folic acid, but not everybody is able to put it to use. I am one of those people who does not put folic acid to use in my body. It's just wasted. So methylfolate is a different form of folic acid that is more um, usable. It's more bioavailable to the body. And then this I just learned about today, S-A-M-E, capital S, capital A, capital M, small e. And it is S. I practice this. I'm going to try it. S. Adensol methanine. Adensol methanine, but most of the time you will see it as capital S A M lowercase e. Now, this is interesting because in many countries that is a prescription that is used to help with depression. In the United States, you can get it over the counter. Now, I am not a homeopathic doctor. So please do not take this as like the stamp of approval. Go run out and buy them. And of course, the quality of supplement is something you always want to check. So, you know, use a reputable company. Do your research. Don't just take my word for it. Go research these things and see what you see in terms of the benefits. And the last thing I want to mention is um, a company that um, I know a few families who have used them. I've talked about. It's called, Heather's laughing at me. It's called, say no, it's an M. M like mom, not M like Nancy. Although, that would be a really good way to remember it. When you go looking for it at the, at the pharmacy, you can just remember saying only with an M, and that might help you be able to find it. But I thought it was very interesting that in some countries that that is used as a, um, it's a, prescription is required. Um, I find that about a few things, like alpha lipoic acid is something that in some countries they use that um, to help with pre-diabetic 
conditions. So people who are in that range of being considered pre-diabetic, that they give, um, they recommend alpha lipoic acid, but it's not ever talked about anywhere that I know of. I've not ever had a doctor talk uh, with me about that, and that was something that my daughter experienced. So ironically, knowing that insulin is affected by trauma is pretty interesting in realizing how many people um, struggle with um, diabetes. So, um, oh, the company I wanted to tell you about, um, the name of the company is Neurogistics. Now, what Neurogistics does is they, you can order, like you call them up and talk about, you know, give them a little information and they'll give you some guidance on what the best test that they offer for you to start with. And like the one that we're using was through urine because everything, everything processes through your kidneys. So, uh, like all of your being able to measure your um, all the things that we were talking about, your serotonin, your dopamine, your insulin, your your um, cortisol level, your oxytocin level, all those kinds of things filter through your kidneys. And so, through a urine sample, in a way that you collect the urine, you dip the paper in it, and then you mail it back to them, and then they run it through their labs, and they give you a very comprehensive report of what the findings are. And so the report will show what body chemical, it'll show what yours is or your child or whoever, it'll show what the normal is, and then in the other column it shows what the potential repercussions are in relationship to that. And then they actually give supplement recommendations. And the quality of supplements that they offer are high quality and they're actually at a really reasonable price. So, so far, I am finding them to be excellent to work with, very knowledgeable, and of all things, um, their founder and director got her start doing research with Dr. Karen Purvis at TCU. So she knows our population very well and is eager to serve, very invested. Um, she, they even have a social worker on their team who could... <coughs> You know, if you're needing support, can help you find resources, help get you plugged in if you're needing help with that. And so I have just found that to be a really good experience. So my point being, um, first and foremost, this might be, e oh, there's a couple other things. <laughs> Look at me, a pew tangent. I know sometimes our kids don't, so a lot of the supplements that they offer are in liquid form. So they're sublingual, you put the drops under your tongue, there's no swallowing of pills because I know that can be a big deal for our children. Also, um, it's worth looking to see what, in terms of the supplements that I mentioned, what you might be able to find in gummy form because gummy form is becoming super popular and it's something that's very kid friendly. And so being able to get like D3 and B12 and fish oil in gummy form might make it something that your children would be more, uh, more likely to use on a regular basis. They may not be so, um, you know, you know that thing. They may not be so argumentative about it and they may not feel so attacked about it because, you know, it's a gummy. Um, and then the other thing is there are some nutrition drinks that have a lot of really good vitamins in them as well. Vitamin water is one that I really like. Um, there's several different flavors that have several different um, benefits. And then also the new um, body armor, super hydrating. There's some really powerful and power-packed nutrients in those as well. And so if you're looking for creative ways to um, boost your nutrition and get something good in a way that's really easy to get it. Those are things that I just, you know, I encourage you to just look into it, do some bottle reading. I know we've got people, you know, our network and follow our page who are extremely knowledgeable about this stuff. So um, I really just want to encourage you guys to be, be creative, uh, be curious, start looking at things that are, um, can make these subtle shifts you know, um, the, other, the, the last thing that I want to talk about, I'm just going to tell a story from today. Um, I was doing a coaching call with a mom, and um, she was sharing about um, there was a time when one of her children was placed 
and the child did not do well in that placement, and the people in the placement then proceeded to say, well, you know, his, the trajectory for him is he's not going to be able to have intimate relationships, he's not going to be able to have close connection, and he's likely to be um, drug addicted, and it was just like they just painted a very negative um, story for this young man. Um, and then she found a different place for him. And there's a, a, a lot more to the story. And the placement idea is probably not, uh, it's probably a pretty good idea because we also have some big acculturation needs and some education needs. And there's a lot of different layers to what's going on that is making this um, possibly a good solution. Anyway, he's thriving in the next placement. He's doing great. He's been there for, um, I think he's been there for two months now, and he's doing really, really well. And then she told another story about how he was talking to a friend about something, and her friend was just like, well, by the time they're 18, they need a job, and they need to be out on their own, and they need to blah, 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 blah. So I just, I'm sharing all of that because I want to remind you guys, not everybody knows all that you know. Not everybody knows about how trauma affects the brain. Not everybody understands about how when we stress, we regress. Not everybody knows that healing is definitely potential. Healing at the brain level is definitely potential, especially when safe, loving relationships consistently over time demonstrate this to be true. So I'm sharing those things because I know you guys get the same thing. I know you hear the same kinds of things. And I always say, I always wonder, it's like, why is it that we're so quick to, to paint a dooming future for a child because they're not responding to our model or our treatment? Why don't we instead say things like, maybe this isn't the best treatment for your child. Maybe there's some other option that's going to be better. Maybe look here. Maybe look there. We're so, um, we tend to be so ego-driven so ego-driven uh, in the helping professions, whether it's doctors or, you know, whomever, that it's like, well, if my, if my model didn't work, it can't be the model. It must be the child. And that's just not true. That's just not true. So please know, please know that there's hope. Please know that there's hope. That our, our, uh, the brain doesn't begin to calm down in all of that development until the mid-20s. And for our children, that's even more delayed. So, yes, Heather, change the model. And if you can't change the model because of the system you're in, at least don't give a dooming prognosis to a child and their family. Don't do that. Just say, I'm sorry I wasn't able to help more. Here's some other places that do things a little different. Maybe that'll be more helpful for you. So, with that, I hope you guys find something helpful. I knew I spewed a whole lot. Um, I won't be here tomorrow. Um, two reasons. One, it's going to be my birthday, and so I'm going to be having cake. And that's exciting because yay cake day. And um, the biggest, most exciting news is uh, my daughter, who you guys have heard me talk about, she's mobile by wheelchair. Um, she got her driving permit during the summer. We were able to purchase a van for her in November, and it had to be shipped off for tons of modifications. And it's finally returned. It's finally returned. And tomorrow we get to go have her fitted for the final pieces of the accommodation so that she'll be able to drive. So I won't see you all tomorrow because I have lots of exciting things going on. Heather says, yeah, she's sobbing. Insurance is saying the doom. Mm. Call me, hon. Send me an email. Let's chat a little bit and get you all edified and built up because you have a lifetime journey and we're not going to quit. So much love to you guys. Make sure that you go give yourself five to ten minutes of quiet time or listening to your favorite music time or a little sitting outside time. Relax, get your energy straight, and then go spend some time with your children this evening. Do something that they enjoy and fall in love with them all over again. Let the love you have for them shine from your eyes. 
Let it emanate from your being. <laughs> and remember, in any given moment, we can act out of our blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. And we can take one to two to three deep breaths. We can choose left. Much love to you guys. We'll see y'all on Monday. Join us live on weekdays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.